did -hmm. you ultimately adopt a flat fee model? And if so, sort of how is that structured in your practice? Yeah, I did adopt the flat fee model. That that is one of the things that I'm reevaluating at, at this point in time. I feel like I'm always reevaluating stuff in the sure. in the firm. I'm, I'm never sitting still, which can be good and bad at the same time. But yeah, so I, I launched with the 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 flat fee model of basically five thousand dollars a year, and that included asset management with with everything just kind of wrapped in, into one, right? So the the client is the, every quarter they're being billed. 1250 right so they see that come off the statement every every quarter and so they knew what they were paying i knew what i was making in, in revenue and it, it seemed to to be going all right and then i attended xypn live for the first time in 2021 okay and ended up going to a, a great breakout session on 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 fees on and charging for for service and there was a another advisor who was doing a flat fee, but they had tiered levels. Because one thing I'd realized is, yeah, I've got a a one client and they're really easy to deal with, but then I've got a husband and wife and now I'm dealing with two people. Mm-hmm. And so it is, it's more, it's more work because I've got two people coming at me from different directions sometimes. Right. And so that, that other firm basically had different tier levels for a, a single client paid, you know, X amount, couple played, couple paid Y, and then a business owner paid Z, right? So there, there's different tier levels. So I ended up changing my pricing structure after that meeting or after that, that conference and ended up, so now I have three different tiers for a single client, a family, and a business owner gets tacked on to one of those tiers. So, yeah, the flat fee model is so interesting because, and I I love it conceptually, uh, but it is yes. interesting where, like, if you're charging five thousand dollars a year, the client who wa- needs really two to three thousand dollars a year of services, they'll never pay you, right? Like, yeah. in the end, you're you're only going to get the clients who need five thousand of services. But if they need ten and twenty thousand dollars of services, they're only paying you five. Like, you don't, yeah. Get, you don't have clients paying you or, you know, you don't have easy clients subsidizing the the more time intensive clients. And are, are you yep. seeing in your practice? Yeah. And that's exactly why I'm kind of reevaluating right now. So I'm kicking around a couple different ideas on how to change the pricing structure of the of the firm. It's, it's I mean, it's worked out fairly well for how would, how long I've been going right now. But Another thing I didn't do is I didn't increase rates mm. every year, right? So over the past two years, I mean, based on inflation, I mean, I'm starting to get crushed with the increase in fees of all my service providers, you know, platform fees and all that sort of stuff. So it, it something has to change. And I'm um, looking at a couple different ways of, of, of changing it. But what are you thinking in terms of adjustments that you'll make? Are you going to add more of a complexity-based fee on the planning side, AUM for the investment management? Like where, what direction are you leaning at this point? Yeah, so I think I'm going to keep the flat fee for the financial planning piece of, of everything and then adding a very small AUM component for the investment management because that's where I see the, the biggest discrepancy is the larger clients... They take, they are taking much more time in researching different investments and that is going to provide the, the, the resources to actually free up the, the time to be able to focus on those, those clients. So, and when I say a very small AUM portion, it's, it's like, it's very small. 